image stabilization is a fact of life for editors. Sometimes you're going to get shots that are locked off on a tripod or somebody's using a handheld stabilizer and the shots are fine and you don't need to think about it. But at other times you might get some news footage that somebody had quickly taken on their mobile phone and it's incredibly jerky and all over the place. Or somebody has tried to do a handheld shot and it's just not quite right, it's a little bit too bouncy, it's a little bit too jerky and it needs smoothing out. And there are two types of approach. One is to make the shot look like it is stabilized, in other words, locked off on a tripod. And the other one is to try and smooth out the jerky motion that you actually end up with. Now, both of these are going to have a cost. When you need to stabilize or smooth out an image, effectively what you're saying is I need to hold part of that frame in the middle so that whatever's in there, the image is going to look like it's staying in one place. And to do that, the frame itself is going to be moved around by the software, which means that you're going to end up with black bars coming and going on the side around the edges of the actual image. Now, to get rid of that so that it fits the frame, you actually need to perform some sort of scaling or some sort of cropping and have it as a picture in picture. If you do do the scaling option, which is the most common option, you're going to smooth out the image somewhat and you're going to lose image detail. So the greater the amount of movement or the greater the amount of stabilization that's required, the greater the scaling that will take place and the resulting smoothing. Okay, so you just need to bear in mind that there is a cost to doing this. Now, there is a very good internal effect inside of Sony Vegas Pro for stabilizing footage, which is great. And there is also a plugin by Boris FX which allows you to have slightly more control. What I would recommend you do is you learn how to use the internal one to Sony Vegas, and if it does what you need it to do, brilliant, go from there, although it does have very limited controls. But if you need more controls, download the trial version from borisfx.com and see how that goes on, and if it does the job for you, then consider purchasing that at that point. But they do work in slightly different ways, and it's the internal one, it's the Sony Vegas Pro internal stabilized one that doesn't work in quite the normal way that you would expect. Now, when you have a piece of footage, you need to bear in mind that when you apply the stabilize, the internal stabilize effect, it's going to apply it to all of the media, kind of regardless of how long the event is going to be, because it doesn't apply it on an event basis, it applies it on a media basis. Okay, so I've got my elephants here in my Explorer. I'm going to drop them on the timeline. And there they are. I'm going to set, yeah, set the project. That's fine. And now the event is inside my media browser. There it is. And if I want to apply the stabilize effect, usually you would go to event FX and you would go and find Sony stabilize, which is under the Sony event. So just click on Sony and you'll find stabilize over here. You'd have thought that you just click it and either click add or double click and OK. So I'm going to click add and OK. And up it comes with a warning. It says you've added the stabilized plugin to an event. This plugin must be applied to a clip or subclip as a media effect. So in other words, get rid of it, don't put it on there and just close it off. The reason that it particularly says or a subclip, as we'll see in the next item over here, if I didn't just take a subclip for the part that I want to use, it would apply the effect to the whole of the clip, which is actually fairly long. And the end result would be it would take a long time to process. OK, so just be aware of that. So I need to apply this as a media effect as opposed to as an event effect. And you do that either up here in your project media panel or actually in the timeline. I'll just show you how to do it. I can select the item here and you notice I've got a button here which allows me to add a media effect. Or I could right click and I can go down to media effect. Or I can actually do it in the timeline by right clicking on the event and actually going to media effect. OK, so it's the same thing when you do this. You're applying it to the media. You're not applying it to the event in the same way. So I'm going to go to Media Effect, and I'm going to go and find that Stabilize. Double click to Apply and click OK, and it's actually there, and I'm ready to go. Now, there are very few options. If I click the presets, you'll see that I've got Light, Medium, and Stabilization. The default actually is Medium. So if I just click Medium, you'll see nothing changes. And if I just go for the other two options just to show you Light, it's just how far these sliders move. OK, now you can theoretically move one of them separately to the other. You can say, well, actually, I'm not actually panning at all, so I can turn down pan smoothing, but I want to increase the stabilization. So you can set these out. I've often found, however, that having them pretty balanced gives a better result. 
Also, it does offer us something called roller shutter correction, which in this particular shot would be worthless. Rolling shutter is a problem with CMOS sensors, which are in most phones, nearly all phones have a CMOS sensor, and most DSLRs have a CMOS sensor, and quite a lot of the high-end video cameras now use CMOS sensors. And basically what happens is the image is scanned from the top down to the bottom, but if you're moving, that means that the top is scanned at a different time to the bottom so the images can warp. And this just basically gives you one option, do you want me to try and correct that or not? Now this wasn't taken on a CMOS, this was taken with a CCD I believe, so it doesn't have rolling shutter. But if you do have rolling shutter, you can try and correct it here, but actually the best place to go and correct it is over in Hit Film, which I'll show you in the next tutorial. You can click this if it's a problem and it might make some difference. It's not fantastic, but it does do something. But if you've got a real problem with rolling shutter, which is particularly pertinent, if you've got to use camera phone footage, then that's something you can deal with in hit film. So to actually see this working, you need to click apply. But let's firstly actually have a look at this event and see how bad it is. So I'm going to click play and you can see it's all over the place. All right. Now you can see over here at times, let's just see if I can find something. There's another, possibly another elephant or something over here as well. Just to give you a feel for the scaling of the item, there are actual other bits and pieces at the side. Now I'm going to click Analyze, and it's relatively quick, because this is 4x3, I think there's NTSC footage. It's old footage, so it's going to get through it fairly quickly. I've got a fairly fast computer here. And when we finish, did you see it pop up? It's scaled. So I'm going to turn off stabilization, turn on stabilization, and you can see it has automatically scaled it to fit so that we're seeing as much of the image as we can without any of those black bars that I talked about before. And when we play it back, we can get a feel for how it looks. So let's go back and have a little look. And you'll see it's okay. There's a little bit of rotation still in there. There's the odd artifact that comes in. It's not fantastic, but it is okay. Now, notice that I am actually just holding my control key so I can move this. I am actually at best full. So you can see that it's not looking fantastic and of course it has softened slightly. And then it becomes a trade-off. Can I turn these down a bit and still get a usable result? Because at the end of the day, you're not going to make this perfect. And what you want to do is produce something that doesn't distract the audience because it's all about your audience. You can have a bit of movement. You can have a bit of things shaking around and being handheld as long as the audience isn't concentrating on the handheld nature of the piece of media. They're not distracted by the media. They're actually watching the event taking place and not distracted by the technology, if you like. So you can perhaps turn it down a bit. But if you do turn it down a bit, you'll need to reapply and go from there. Now, I'm just going to X that off at the moment. Now, the other thing that you'll need to do, because this has been scaled, is possibly add some kind of sharpening to the image. So I'm going to now go to the event FX, and I'm going to find under Sony Blur, just click under that, and you'll see that there is actually Sony Sharpen, and I can double click to apply that and click OK. And then I can play with the amount of sharpening that I'm going to add to this image, but please, please remember, less is more with sharpening. If you go too far, you can usually look at it after a moment or two and think, goodness me, what was I thinking about? So my advice is with sharpening, which starts at 50% if you like, is add a little bit, and when you think that looks okay, pull it back a bit. Okay, because when you render it out, it's going to look, you probably think you've overdone it. So to my eye, sharpen it up till it looks about right, and then always go back a little bit after that to try and get the right result. Okay, so that is stabilizing and sharpening an event using the native Sony plugin. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at the BCC plugin, optical stabilization, and the different controls we have with that. And we'll actually compare the two at that point. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.